Hi, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Um, I'm Don Montoya, founder of Connect to All. I'm a, an angel investor and tech consultant, and you can find me on LinkedIn. And we are here at the Zeal Reserve headquarters in beautiful Manhattan Beach, California, located on the studio lot where James Cameron produces and films Avatar. So I think it's only fitting that we start with a two minute video introducing Zeal. Hello, I'm Sam Borghese. I'm co-founder of Zeal Reserve and a professor at UCLA. Over the last two and a half years, I've been designing deep tech curriculum. So I taught the first blockchain course in the UCLA economics department, first cloud computing course in the UCLA economics department, uh, teach machine learning and finance, and other topics just mainly focused on optimizing human time. Another thing I did for UCLA is co-founded the Quant Lab. This is a algorithmic mock hedge fund that trades currencies and commodities. We use economic fundamentals to signal different forecasts in currencies, commodities, and now expanding into equities and other asset classes. In 2021, we saw a huge opportunity of institutional demand for crypto and a lack of safe solutions. That's why we created Zeal Reserve. It took us an entire year of vetting all of our service providers, running our algorithms as incubators, uh, testing and developing until we finally launched January 1st, 2022. Our algorithm is developed by myself and a team of quants. Uh, we are always monitoring new data sources and new potential information that could improve our algorithms. Before anything is deployed, it goes into an incubator fund where we monitor it over a long period of time for any bugs, for quality control, and to make sure it's performing the way we expect it to. In 2021, when Bitcoin was at its all-time highs, a lot of people had a false narrative of something called a super cycle, that we would never see a huge extended drawdown in crypto. We knew this was incorrect. This is why we launched Zeal Reserve, just one month off of the top of the crypto market. This is a place where our investors could put their capital during an extended bear market to preserve their gains and harvest yield. This is because we are a volatility hedge. So we are banking and profit off the fact that crypto will continue to be volatile. In the PwC crypto report, they saw over 600 crypto hedge funds founded in 2017. In the first quarter of 2018, over half of these went bankrupt. One of the leading reasons for their bankruptcies was leveraged over risky positions. Here at Zeal, we decided to build strategies that have no leverage whatsoever to help mitigate any chance of catastrophic loss for our clients. I'd like you to meet the co-founders of Zeal Reserve. And if you guys can each give a quick bio, uh, Andrew. Sure. Um, I've got 25 years of experience uh, raising, managing, and investing private equity funds uh, over $3 billion worth. In addition, I have invested uh, institutional money for globally recognized firms like MetLife Investors and ING. And I've also invested and managed money for a multi-billion dollar family office here in Southern California. Great. Uh, Ace uh, Estok? Yeah, my name is Ace. I am CMO and president of Zeal Reserve. I have been working in the startup and venture capital space for the better part of the last decade, helping companies and building companies in a variety of sectors, including CPG, wellness, health tech, fintech, and others. Um, and now I provide operational and marketing support for Zeal. Cool. Sam uh, Regezi, it's you're up. Sure. Thank you so much, Don, and thank you all for attending. Uh, you got a little bit of my intro in the video we just showed, uh, but I am full-time faculty at UCLA. I taught the first blockchain course in the econ department. I teach quantitative finance. Currently, I'm teaching applied machine learning. Um, alongside that, we all came together um, to use uh, some of my skills in forecasting currencies, uh, like I did when founding the Quant Lab, uh, to build uh, the algorithm that is uh, this first fund inside Zeal Reserve. Great. Um, Andrew, uh, what is Zeal? Uh, Zeal is a cryptocurrency based volatility hedge fund. Uh, we trade only in large cap coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on. 
Um, one of the differentiating factors of uh, Zeal is that we are attempting to bring a more institutional fund to what has inherently been a non-institutional space. Uh, we will be providing uh, institutional quality audits, uh, back office reporting, investor relations, um, and other things to, to give our customers a, a level of comfort. Cool. Um, and Asa, why Zeal? Well, Sam and I are crypto investors that have been active in the space for the last five, five six years or so, um, and have both made and lost relative fortunes and decided to, you know, to solve that problem um, of the volatility of crypto to work with Andrew and his vast experience in institutional finance to create products that allow us exposure to the crypto asset class, but also manage the volatility and manage the downside risk. Uh, to try and create something that's the best of both worlds. Okay, well, well, Sam, how did Zeal perform last year? Yeah, so just as Ace and Andrew were saying, is we created Zeal to be a hedge against volatility, give people crypto exposure uh, without the massive downside. So here you can see our performance since we launched in January 2022. Um, and as many people know, this was a atrocious year for equities, um, real estate even, and almost every single asset class. But Zeal Reserve did not lose money in this time period. Um, and starting off January 2023, which we'll look at later, um, we're up double digit returns here as well. So every asset we traded in 2022, we outperformed by over 60%. So, right, that's a uh, extreme alpha proving the thesis that we set out uh, to accomplish when we first started Zeal. It, well, where is crypto currently? Ace, you get that? Well, from a regulatory perspective, we just had some really big news earlier this month. The SEC issued a Wells notice against Paxos, the uh, New York-based stablecoin issuer. So what Paxos does is they create their own stablecoins, Paxos and Paxos Gold, that are uh, pegged to the US dollar and gold, respectively. But more notably, they provide and issue all of the stablecoin for Binance. Um, and they've been issued what is essentially a cease and desist from the SEC. So going forward, they're only going to be processing withdrawals, meaning the market cap of Binance dollars is going to only decrease over time. And this comes at a really interesting time because only a few weeks prior, Binance quietly rolled all of their client funds that were held as rival stablecoins, Tether or USDC. Mm -hmm. They rolled those into Binance dollar. Um, to try to make a, you know, publicly to make a simpler, more seamless experience for their clients, privately to uh, reinforce the market cap of their of their proprietary mm -hmm. stablecoin. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going away with a new ruling by the SEC that stablecoins like Binance dollars are considered securities, even though there's no expectation of ROI. So it's it's a little confusing. But if you read between the lines a little bit, they have carved an exception for USDC, um, which is American based, um, unlike Binance, which is obviously headquartered in China. And it appears that they may be making a play to either nationalize or contract with Circle and USDC to create the much anticipated USD uh, coin, digital dollar. Um, so lots of, of, uh, of turmoil here. This is a, a really big move. And only time will tell how it all shakes out for players in the space. And, and what this means for Zeal, just to add on, is we are excited about this, right? Because most funds will hear regulation and, and all this turmoil and get very scared, scared of downside volatility. So all of this fear, the headlines, we are very excited about, which we have proven in the past. You know, the times of FTX collapse, we'll look at the Luna yeah. collapse. Those have all been profitable times for us. So this is... Uh, you know, negative news, if you look at it in terms of volatility. So, which means so, so what's the differentiator between Zeal and FTX? Yeah, so difference between FTX, right? FTX, a horrible situation. They were an exchange and they were siphoning people's money into a hedge fund, all of research, and taking excessively risky bets. So not only were they over leveraging, using other people's money and banks' money to take excessively risky long bets into these cryptocurrencies. What we do is completely different. It is absurdly different. We are a US registered hedge fund. We are a US based hedge fund that uh, does long short trading. We do medium term long short trading to essentially 
attempt to smooth out the thousand percent upside and 90 percent down of crypto and create something where people can get exposure but they don't have to worry about uh bankruptcy of the underlying assets uh you know complete collapse of the assets and so forth and another difference is that we are audited periodically and mm -hmm. we publish those results so unlike ftx where you're taking the the word of a 30 year old in the bahamas okay. we have a number of third party uh, uh vendors and partners who are verifying our trades verifying our our track record so that what we say is actually what it is mm -hmm. so where are we at in growth yeah so the crypto industry as a whole is growing exceptionally Right in the last um, in the last five years, we've seen crypto go from the hundred million market cap to over a trillion. Uh, J J P Morgan has implemented blockchain inside of their own banking system using J P M coin and so forth. Right. So we're seeing uh, large institutional adoption of this, and the regulation you could even say is a positive for adoption. Right, cryptocurrency was something that was started largely in. The community was started in chat rooms and underground and not in the public interest. And now you're seeing it on uh, primetime TV, uh, being implemented by the likes of Equinox, Facebook tried to release Libra coin, right? Uh, Starbucks is releasing their blockchain based loyalty re rewards. It is obvious when you start looking at all the applications of this, um, that crypto will be here to stay and is the future of the Internet. Um, is the common opinion. And so firms like us, we look forward to this coming regulation because it actually opens doors to more concrete partnerships and more stable operations within the space, both with other crypto companies as well as potential government partners. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about security. Yeah. So the security of our uh, crypto is we have a custodian in San Francisco Open Exchange. They hold all of our crypto with uh, fire blocks, which is industry standard. Uh, they use a sharding mechanism, so the keys are not held in one primary location. They're held throughout the entire U.S., um, and it requires uh, three out of five of the shards to actually open up the vault and withdraw or put forward any crypto. Uh, no more than two shards are ever in one location at one time. So one person cannot open up and uh, take the crypto out of you know, it's uh, it's safe. The other thing that's really interesting is we use San Francisco Open Exchange. They're an aggregator across over 10 crypto exchanges, over 15 OTC desks. So they trade, we trade through them using their relationships with these different exchanges and OTC desks. So our investors' money does not sit on these exchanges. It sits in cold storage uh, using the multi-party computation I just described. It sits in cold storage and we trade against a balance sheet on these exchanges. And once a day at the end of the day, uh, SFOX, San Francisco Open Exchange, goes to the exchange and they said we had uh, inflows and outflows of uh, customers trading, what do we owe you at the end of the day? Oh, so okay. uh, 99, over 99% of the time, all of the crypto is held in cold storage completely yeah. offline. Uh, and Sam, do you want to speak about our Lloyd's of London coverage? Yeah, there is also Lloyd's of London insurance over uh, the private key, the physical private keys being hacked. So let's say some crazy occurrence where uh, you know all of these secret facilities get hacked, there is Lloyd's of London insurance, and that is well over uh, nine figures per client. All right, that's great. So, what is the strategy for Zeal going forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, for Zeal going forward, uh, we are going to continue running the algorithm that we have built, and we spent years developing this, right? I originally launched the Quant Fund, developing algorithms to forecast foreign currencies, uh, commodity futures, and so forth. Uh, we spent over a year designing, tweaking, using R&D consultants, other quants, our interns, to build out this AI-driven, you know, 24-7 uptime algorithm. And let me walk you through essentially how that works. So, uh, we take in dozens of features. Here's just a few we highlight. Obviously, we're not going to give away 
um, all of our secret sauce inside of a deck like this. But we pull in not only uh, technical information, which a lot of funds do, we also pull in sentiment information and we pull in fundamentals about macro economy and about crypto itself. Uh, it's proprietary how we uh, convert these factors into things that we have found to be very useful in forecasting uh, the different asset prices of crypto. So we have a large amount of data sources coming in. Our AI looks at this information and it starts to understand recently what has been influencing crypto. Right. So you can yes. see here, you know, in this spider chart, uh, short interest in the time period of early 2022 uh, had a large influence. Everybody was looking about short interest, talking about it because the short interest was very high. So this was a driving feature inside of our model. Uh, another difference in between what we do and the majority of AI funds do is we use interpretable AI. So inside of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning models, there's a trade-off in between the interpretability of a model and in between its accuracy. So the more accurate a model gets, you start losing interpretability. And this causes some devastating things inside of funds because they will run what are called black box algorithms because they make the most money for a given period. But all of a sudden that algorithm can start making trades that make no sense and losing money and not being adjusted to uh, you know, black swan events like COVID. And because it's black box, these funds have no clue why it's making those decisions. There's no ways to go in and mitigate that. We use completely interpretable AI. I can point and I can show you exactly why our algorithm makes the decisions it does. So we can correct um, it, if ever need be for the decisions. And, and, and I, I believe we're, we're covering dozens of, of things yep. in real time. This, this is one of the things with human time. Algorithm runs 24-7. Mm -hmm. Dozens of, of, of things are going on in the world. Like you said, S&P 500, Google, short interest, all that. And the algorithm is looking at all this immediately comp computing. Yes, so I need, I'm going to do a buy. I'm going to do a sell. And it's running 24-7 and learning from this, which is just amazing. So Sam, what are, what do these trades look like? Oh, I'm happy you asked. So I pulled up some examples. I just hard coded them um, uh, into uh, into a graph for a graphical representation. Let's look at our most recent signals on Bitcoin. Now remember, we're trading a variety of different cryptocurrencies. Um, so we have the diversification, and uh, we're not all exposed to just one, right? Uh, so you can see here, we actually went long uh, January. Uh, six at about sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars. The the absolute minimum for Bitcoin at this time was right around there. So we went long, and our algorithm, even after this large pump upwards, you can see this is a huge increase of of uh, twenty four percent. It knew we were not done yet, and it stayed in the position in Bitcoin here until we saw severe times of weakness. And you can see it actually exited the position right before uh, this large crash, right? Gotcha. Large crash here. Um, we had about 5%, right? So it incubated our investors. Now, our algorithm, it doesn't capture all of the upside of Bitcoin. But what we get for that is it gets some incubation against huge downside losses. So you can see it, it entered a short just for about a day because there was fear of collapse in this time, right? There's sentiment fear of collapse. So if there was collapse, we would have profited severely. But instead we lost, you know, a percent or so and ended up entering along. I know we just exited Ethereum, our algorithm exited Ethereum this morning. So potentially we'll exit uh, Bitcoin again with all the uh, horrible, uh, or all of the news, however you want to interpret it out there, Ace was talking about. Volatility, yeah. Um, so, uh, so another example, uh, let's go back to the Luna collapse. This was a uh, newsworthy collapse, right? You can see we entered a short position mm -hmm. right before the large downside collapse we had in Bitcoin. And we held it all the way until here, until we started, right? There's some strength again. So what our returns look like is it looks like little losses saying we might collapse, we might skyrocket, 
Um, but if we don't, we only lose a couple percent there. But what we gain for those lost percent is the ability to capture these huge movements. Right. So that's what our return profile looks like. Little losses with humongous gains uh, when they really matter. Right. And which, what is the average length of one of these positions? Yeah, so the average length is eight and a half days. However, for incorrect positions, the, the small positions we lose money on, it's, uh, it's less. I believe right now it's currently about three days for the positions we lose money on, right? Very short time period. For the ones we make money on, it's closer to a month we stay in the positions, as you've yeah. seen from these two examples here. And again, emphasizing the key with Zeal is do not lose our clients' money. We are not taking risky positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's open this to questions. I see some people have been sending in some questions while we were going on. And uh, I think, how is Zeal affected by the fallout of the FTC failure? Did we uh, fully address that? Or is there anything else to say? Uh, I mean, I think that we haven't seen the full tide of volatility from the FTX fallout. There are close to 150 subsidiaries that FTX bought uh, scrupulously and otherwise. And so all of those assets are being divvied up, broken apart, sold, and that's going to increase volatility in the next uh, few months, as well as, you know, the, the, the other part of the fallout is, is regulation, right? This has advanced the timeline for regulation, um, which has been dreadfully slow. It's 2023. We have the first piece of formal uh, policy coming out of the SEC defining some stable coins as securities, uh, which again is absurd, but we see these wheels starting to turn at the uh, at the Capitol building. So uh, all of this will increase volatility in the short term, and we are excited and ready for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, a um, couple of people have asked this. So what, what are what, what assets is Zeal invested in? Great. So right now uh, we are trading four assets, and as we mentioned, they are all very large cap cryptos with tons of liquidity. Um, so you can see here the four we currently have strategies on and we're working on more are basic attention token, link, ETH, and Bitcoin. And as I mentioned, the criteria for us building a strategy on these is to have enough history where there is statistical significance to the model we build. We know it has performed in a certain way in Bitcoin for the last 10 years, and we can expect it to perform the same way for 10 years to come, right? So... Uh, it needs to have been around for a long enough time. It needs to have very high liquidity where we can enter and exit positions without huge amounts of slippage. So our fund has the ability to scale, um, you know, tens of millions and onward. And, um, and then, of course, there has to be a lot of significance. We can't have these tokens moving in random ways. They have to be largely driven by some fundamentals, some sentiment indicators, right? So the coin has to fit that as well. So we're not trading... Dogecoin, right? That seems to just move off of uh, these, maybe call them white swan events. If you're, uh, you know, Dogecoin investor, or a random yeah. tweet that nobody could have seen coming, shooting it up ten times, right, and so forth. So let's call those white swan events. If you're, uh, <laughs> like if you're that's, right. that's what I was, that's what I was referencing. Right. Yeah. Okay. So how how liquid are uh, the investments in Zeal? Well, as with most of the considerations, there's a compromise at play between maximizing liquidity for our investors and, and protecting our strategy. So as Sam mentioned, the average length of some of our more successful positions can be up to a month or even a little mm -hmm. bit longer. And so as such, the minimum safe lockup period that we've determined is six months. So that way, you know, we're, we're not compromising the strategy or the integrity of our trades. And we're still providing what we think is, is adequate liquid, liquidity to our clients. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how, how six months. So free, six months uh, a lockup. Okay, a lockup for six months, and, and okay, that's for months. our investors. Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all right. Um, uh, how are you guys make good money? Oh yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the other the other thing I wanted to bring up on that last question. Okay, go ahead. Um, was because we are trading highly liquid assets, we offer the transparency to our clients of a daily nap. So maybe, Andrew, could you speak on your past fund experience? How often would you give a NAV to your investors or your funds? Sure, sure. No, the daily NAV is really significant. Uh, across my experience uh, in multiple private equity funds, even institutional funds, uh, we, were, uh, bit, we only were able to give quarterly uh, uh, asset values. We, we, I know every three months, we look at everything. We say, okay, it's worth this, and your investment's worth this. Mm -hmm. With Zeal, 
It's just like logging into your stock market broker account, your mutual fund. Any moment of any day, you can log in and say, oh, I put in 200,000, now it's worth a half a million. And you can see that every single day. Mm -hmm. Very unusual. Uh, and again, more institutional, more like a stock market brokerage account. Yeah. What you would be comfortable. You get them in the mail too, right? Like a bigger <laughs> packet. Yeah. Well, yeah. FedEx. With the quarterly valuations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have it's a, it's a huge thing. Kill, yeah. kill a lot of trees. And a lot of trees. <laughs> yeah. You know, we have um, daily mass yeah. monthly statements sent out by our fundamentals. So, what are the fees for this hedge fund? Yeah. So, the fees are a 1% management fee and a 25% uh, performance fee. The reason we didn't do a 2 and 20 is because we are very confident in our algorithm. And so we want to be as close to at, we don't make money if you don't make money as possible with of course, institutions wanting a 1% management fee there. So we can always uh, retain the best talent for them. So. Yeah, the 1% helps us uh, keep the lights on even during slow periods. And the 25% ensures that we are highly, our, our, our interests are highly aligned with those of our investors. Uh -huh. And of course we do a high watermark, which is a very aggressive fee structure. So very we, aggressive for our clients, uh, for our conservative, clients for us. Right. conservative for us, because we won't take uh, a fee on the same dollar twice. The second we make you a dollar that is in your account, uh, if we go under that, we'll never take a fee again until we surpass well, your okay. previous account high. Yeah. So again, we don't make money unless you make money. Unless the client's making money, we, we aren't. That 1% doesn't really, it's, it's kind of meaningless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're okay. very motivated and interests are aligned. So anyone want to get anything to add before we close? Uh, no, just uh, yeah, 1% and 25 uh, okay. And the performance fee. All right. Well, what we're, we're doing here is we're inviting accredited investors to join us and participate in our growth. Yeah. Uh, we have a special intro uh, offer for attending uh, this webinar. And if you have any more questions or want more uh, info or a one on one with one of the founders, uh, you can e email me at Don, D O N N, two N's, at zealreserve.com and I'll schedule something. Um, there's more in depth information on the zealreserve.com website. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming, for attending. Take some time out of your day. Uh, have a great day, and we hope to hear from you soon. And uh, from the James Cameron studio lot, that's a wrap. Uh, <laughs> goodbye. Great. Thank Thanks, you all Tom. for coming. Thank all you. Right. Thank you.